Hello, hello everybody, this is Tip Top Gaming here today with another Magic the Gathering Arena video. And it's my favorite time of the month, the MTG Arena State of the Game. So today we are breaking down the January 2020 State of the Game. So I'm going to read through it, break down what's happening, give you a little bit more insight and all of that. And so it'll be just a fun and quick way to get all the information you need. It's going to be an epic year for Magic the Gathering Arena, and it all begins next week with our January game update. We're bringing you a new card set, new features, and a new way for you to download and play. So then, there's this little video which they always do, and I'm not going to show you it because I don't want to just use their content. Um, but you do get a little bit, a couple extra details from watching these, so if you're ever reading this in the future, it might uh, help you to watch these, or you could just watch this video because I watched it, and I got a couple key points that are not mentioned in the article, but yeah. They're Roost Beyond Death, so if we look at the screenshot, we see a couple older cards, but we do see the Nyx Basic Lands and the Theros Gods. Now, it is interesting to note that the Owl, we now know, has multiple colors, because we saw the Owl in the art for the pre-order, and it has multiple colors, but why don't we jump right into this next part? Yes, those are Nyx Basic Lands. They won't be available with this release, Well, but we'll have more information on how you can obtain these lands and other showcase-style cards in a future update. So... Similar to Throne of Eldrain, where they had the showcase cards as the event rewards, I assume that these, because there are less showcase firms this time, these are going to be part of it. So I'm going to assume it's going to be four showcase card styles, or it could be even less because it's gods and demigods, which are generally pretty powerful cards. So I'm going to assume it might be three each. You know, you get one demigod, one god, and one nyx land, and I would assume the nyx land's gonna be the final reward because while styles for cards are pretty cool, basic lands are in every deck pretty much, so those are pretty important. Um, I did, I think, say this in a previous video that I thought nyx lands, you were gonna have to unlock them, which ended up being true, and it kind of stinks that, and you'll see this as a theme, they're like, here's something cool coming to MTG Arena, not this month, but... Uh, I guess that's kind of fair for January. January is kind of this month where they're like, hey, here's what we're going to be doing for the next year. So that's what a lot of this article is about. But there was Beyond Death also heralds the return of sagas, devotion, and constellation to standard play, as well as the ex ad, uh, as well as the addition of new key. Uh, the oh my god, as well as the addition of the new keyword escape. Once again, Matt Tabak serves as a dual idyllic tutor for explaining both the old and new mechanics. So uh, I think I already went over that. Uh, if you want to find that, uh, there'll be. You, you should be able to find that on YouTube with a quick search, and I have made multiple videos about all the mechanics. In MTG Arena, Constellations, Devotion, and Escape will feature their own badge and brief explanation as how the text works. So you'll notice that in this image, this is your Devotion, you can see it right there, and each thing will have its own little icon, and add. that's true of any mechanic. Also, they'll have their own special effects similar to this. Epic Game Store, so this is really exciting. But not for the reason you're probably thinking. We are also happy to announce that with the January 16th release, we will be officially launching on the Epic Game Store. For established players, you'll still be able to download it and play as you have been. Playing through the Epic Game Store will be completely optional, and it is not a requirement. You also share the play cube regardless of which version you play, so you're welcome to choose your preferred platform. We'll have more information and a complete FAQ as we get closer to next Thursday. So, basically they're like, hey, this is happening next week. They didn't give a lot of information, but they gave some very important points, and I felt, feel like I should reiterate it. When they announced that they were coming to Epic Game Store, they said that you would still be able to get it through their website, which a lot of people don't want to support Epic Games, or they don't want another thing they have to install. So that's probably really, that's probably really good. That is really good. A couple things to note. They said that Mac support would be coming out after Epic Game support, which means that is coming very soon. And that's probably what the title of this video was, is Mac coming soon, because, well, that's probably the biggest thing in this article. My most popular video was Mac coming to Arena confirmed, and that's at, like, 5,000 views, which is huge for my channel. And so, it clearly is something that players are wanting. Collections, first and new tag. Also, I'll be doing a video covering the FAQs when those come out. Collection, first and new tags. For those of you eagerly awaiting those Theros Beyond Death boosters that have been sitting in your collection since the game awards, another new feature we're happy to announce is the first and new tags when opening booster packs and viewing your collection. When, you op when opening booster packs, the first time you receive a card in your collection, it'll be marked with, you guessed it, first. So if we look at this image, you know, that doesn't make it much bigger, but they opened 10 packs, and that's why that you can only see the rares, but it's showing them that they have not re collected a copy of this card, this card, th or this card, or that card. But it's basically allowing you to say, hey, these are the cards that you haven't collected, which allows you to manage it and be like, oh, 
I didn't realize I didn't have that card, or, oh, maybe I should look at this card. Maybe it's a fun commander for Brawl. I think that's really good. On top of that, there's a new tab, so when you open the collection builder, it'll show you, hey, here's all the cards that you've gotten since the last time you've opened it. That can be really good if you're a new player and you're like, oh, my mono black deck that I just threw a bunch of random black cards in there. Ooh, I got this new black card that I haven't seen. Maybe I should look at it. So I think that works out really well. It also, you'll notice on... Uh, this one, it shows you that he, this person has gotten two new ones because both of them are lit up. So that's also very cool. As you can see, cards are flagged as being new in your collection will be automatically sorted first when viewing your collection. Now, I'm not a huge fan of that, although you could just leave and come back. Uh, I, I don't know if there's another way you could do it, but it just seems kind of annoying. Uh, yeah. And mousing over the card will dismiss the tag, so you can just mouse over all of them really quickly if you really wanted to, or you could just flip the page. Please note that these tags will not appear when you are drafting, and no, ducking out your, to, your, to view your cards before finishing your draft doesn't work either. These tags only appear once you've reached the deck building portion of limited events, so you don't actually get the cards until drafts are over. That kind of sucks, but uh, that would be really cool if it showed you how many of each card you had in draft, although I don't know if they want you to be able to do that. Deck Builder, new sorting options. Uh, a new card set means new meta, which means it's time for some good old-fashioned brewing. To help get things sorted, ha, huh, we're adding two new sorting options for your decks, favorites and last played. So you'll notice here the little stars means it's one of your favorite decks, which you might want to do for your, like, your top deck. And you'll be able to sort it by the last one you played. So if you that way, generally, the decks you play the most will appear at the top. That's a, probably a pretty good sort, sort um, option. That's pretty much all this has to say. We also tweaked how sorting by color identity works. Selecting multiple colors will now work as an AND filter, not an OR filter. Oh my gosh, I said this in the last video. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so annoying. When I click red and black, I get my black, my mono black decks, my mono red decks, my red green decks. No, I just want a red and black deck. That's why I'm picking two colors. So thank you. Historic events with the historic rank queue temporary coming to an end with the Earth Beyond Death will be adding two new events for historic play. Historic constructed and traditional historic constructed as another way for you to play your decks until historic rank returns. So for those of you who don't remember, they basically announced that hey, we're gonna have two seasons basically, two types of seasons, a standard season and a historic season. So whenever a standard set is released, so in this case Theris Beyond Death, we switch to a standard season. And then once the hype behind Theris Beyond Death leaves, we're gonna release a historic anthology and re-add the rank queue. So standard rank queue is always on, but historic rank queue is only on half the time. That way you're not drawing sales away from the standard set. Um, we'll be adding two new events. Yeah, so they're adding the, like, there's a standard event, which is basically just enter with a standard deck, pay, I think it's like 500 gold, and you could theoretically get that gold back or more, which is really good. Uh, and I think that's really good for historic players. For those of you who are familiar with our standard events, the historic version will follow the same game records, cost of entry, and price structure. So they will be, um, we, they, they will, oh my god, I can't think of what I'm trying to say. <laughs> They'll be the same rewards, and so it won't penalize you for playing historic. Now, I wish historic rank queue was actually its own rank and its own play queue all the time. By doing that, they could actually squeeze out more money. I mean, they're, that way players who aren't, maybe aren't interested in standard, but are like, I need to get all the rewards would have to go out of their way to get uh, ranked uh, or historic rank, which would entice them to play the game more and get more cards and build more decks. Because you could just build one really good standard deck and not do anything else, which a lot of people do. So by encouraging people to not only play draft, but also play uh, standard, but also play historic, I think that that would be a good idea. Also, don't forget, the historic challenge is this weekend. I will be doing a uh, breakdown of that event today as well. For those of you... Uh, the Constructed Best of 3 event will feature high entry fee and prizes to match, kind of like the metagame challenge for standard, and full details are available on the previous day of the game. Okay, the return of Brawl Days. Now this, I hate. We ran Brawl Days last update as an experiment, and we found that over half the players who regularly play Brawl engage with the event. We consider this a strong success for our intended audience, and we're excited to bring this back for the January update. Are they really calling it Brawlidays? That was supposed to be holidays. Whatever. This month's event will run from the launch of January update to the February update for 10,000 gold. Now, it doesn't say gems, which is cool. Now, I want to say a couple things. First off, Tolerant Sky Summoner, now in Historic. So if you want to build a Historic deck around him, cool. He's now in Standard Brawl, which I think is a mistake deviating from um, Paper Magic. Make Paper Magic st Brawl 
then make historic brawl and add these to historic brawl and make historic brawl an actual queue. So, you know, I'm sure they would even get more success if you could play both normal brawl and historic brawl in this queue, but the fact that they're not supporting historic brawl really surprises me because the more card support you have, the more cards people have to get. I don't understand it and they're kind of, they're confusing players. I guess their idea is no one's playing paper magic, but so this would be a mono blue brawler, brawler, commander, and yeah. They've also noticed an uptick in the number of people playing Brawl and Direct Challenge and Friends Challenge. It's cool to see more community run tools making it easier for players to find each other. And we're going to spend lots of our efforts this year increasing the social aspect of playing with friends in game. That starts with friend messaging hitting in the next few months. Okay, cool message there. Friends messaging is coming up in the next few months, but we'll get back to that in a second. This is ridiculous. They are basically saying, hey, we noticed that you have to use an outside tool to play Brawl. That's cool. Not, and, and we're going to make it easier to, to battle each other. Not We're going to add a brawl queue. A real brawl queue, not this garbage. You can just buy, get a, send a rare wild card. If you're like, I don't have rare wild cards, buy 10 packs, you'll get a rare wild card. <sighs> this really bothers me. It doesn't say 2,000 gold. It might be. They just might realize no one's going to spend 2,000 gold on this. I think the card choice is fine. Rise, I haven't really seen him in brawl. Haven't really seen him in historic that much. Um, it's fine. I am upset about this. This is probably, like, everything's been so good. Historic events, good. This new deck sorting, good, they're listening. Uh, the new tags, also really good. Very similar to the store. The uh, Theros and the Epic Game Store, even though the Epic Game Store I know some people are upset about, it's actually a good thing. They're, they're expanding the reach without taking anything away. You don't have to download from the Epic Game Store, so don't get upset about this. What you should get upset about is this. This is ridiculous. They need to either add rewards to Brawler Days or get rid of the entry fee, lower the entry fee by a ton, just don't do them at all and just make a normal play queue. Any of those options would be better. Either way, so then we have the Legend of Arena. And so, escaping from the Underworld, this is how we decided to start our year. There's still a long journey ahead of us. So this is their journey ahead. And um, I'm going to break this down before I actually go over all the items. There's going to be a video breaking down each item in general. So I'm actually just going to quickly go through these and then... Monday, there'll be Monday. There should be a video breaking down each of these in general, going over all the facts we know about them, so on and so forth. Okay, so coming soon says clean, shine, and polish. Features listed here going through their final stages of development as our quality assurance team puts them to the test. Hey, they have a quality assurance team. This is when we things are close enough to release that we can start talking about timelines and release dates. In development, turning ideas into reality. Item listed here in active development with a dedicated developer resources and task list to complete. So that'd be this list, and I'll go over that here in a second. And then in concept, putting pen to paper or fingers to keyboard. This is our planning stage where we decide what ideas become features, but also which ideas must stay ideas for now. Once decided features are scoped out, iterated on, reworked, and reiterated, we start to figure out how to bring these ideas to digital. So this is when they decide that they're going to do two to one, wild cards, brawl days, etc. We, okay, so why don't we break this down? So coming soon, we have Theros Beyond Death is releasing, which generally when a set releases, the update is pretty small, so I'm not going to complain about it. Oh, God. I don't know what's happening there. Whoops. Theros Beyond Death is releasing. Generally, when those are released, uh, big sets, it does not affect, like, there's not that much in it. The Epic Games Room, that's pretty big. And the Deck Builder Quality of Life is two buttons, so I don't know if I'd consider that a big enough feature. I would call Historic Ending a bigger event, or Brawler Days again to be a bigger event than that, but whatever. In development, so these are the things that they are currently typing. So these are the things coming out. These are the things they are basically coding as we speak or finishing up coding. Friend messaging, so that's at the top of the list. Then macOS, then Ikoria, then Corset 2021, then a Historic Anthology 2, then updated tutorial. Now, there are a couple things I think are a little bit weird in this ordering. If these are supposed to be in order, right, this is implying that Historic Anthology 2 is coming after the next two sets, when they clearly said Historic Anthology is coming up between every set. So unless they're changing their mind on that, and are actually just going to release it one time per year, which is completely possible because I believe it was between, was I think it was, be, no, it was after, was it, I, I don't remember this year. This year it was either after Throne of Eldraine or before it, but it'd be around this time period. Now, I think that this isn't in order. Now, if this was in order, you could say, wow, before Ikoria, which comes out in April, so before April we'll get friend messaging and macOS, which is huge, but then again, this historic anthology is really throwing me off. Also, I think the updated tutorial is meant for Corset 2021. And so that comes out, because in the video they talked about 
Corset 2021 and the update tutorial very closely. Um, so, yeah, up Historic Anthology 2. I'm going to assume that this doesn't take a lot of time to add to the game, and so it's just not super high on their list of, like, things. I don't know. We're going to have to see more about Historic Anthology 2. This video is getting really long. Either way, in concept is where we start getting really cool. I mean, macOS is really cool. That's a whole nother operating system being able to play this game. Friend messaging is okay. It's something we can do with Discord right now. Ikorian, of course, at 2021. We've already expected those. Historic Anthology 2, we already expected that. Updated tutorial doesn't matter to anyone in the game who's already gone through the tutorial and knows what they're talking about. So, that basically means if you don't own a Mac, you don't um, if you don't own a Mac, you don't play Historic, you don't go through the tutorial, and you don't have friends, slash, or, or use Discord, you basically, you care about something here, but a lot of the stuff you actually don't care about, but here's where we get really cool things. Cube drafting, friend deck sharing, eight-person draft, pioneer set remasters, and playblade rework. So, playblade rework is when you click play, all the different, um, like, icons that show up on the right. With the new formats that are being adding right now, you have to, like, scroll a ton, and that's not... Mm, I don't like it, and so neither do they, and so they're working on that. Pioneer Set Remasters, I did a whole video covering that. 8-person draft, now this means real draft, not against bots. It's interesting that Cube Draft is coming before that. Because generally, and uh, my only thought is that maybe they'll be releasing their own cubes, and that's what they're calling Cube Draft here, but I feel like you'd need this to do this, so I don't think these are necessarily in order. And then friend deck sharing, if you guys don't remember, that was uh, when they said, hey, when you're direct challenging a friend, you can give them a deck to play. We want to give a special call out to friends messaging, which will allow you to directly message your friends in game. This is the next major feature to our social functionality that players should expect. And while we don't have an exact date yet, you should expect it sooner rather than later. We're also working on an updated tutorial system, one designed to help newer players or older players who are rediscovering magic better understand both the way certain deck archetypes and colors play, or why they may have lost practice, or may, or they may have lost certain practice or tutorial games. Okay, with the Heroes Beyond Death coming, that didn't, that, one designed to help new players, okay, this, this sentence, I, I'm probably misunderstanding it, one designed to help newer players better understand both the way certain deck archetypes and colors play, or why they may have lost practice or tutorial games. Don't know what that means. With Theros Beyond Death coming, Corset 2021 has now just joined our Ikoria in the active development. Work continues on our social features, and our goal is to implement direct messaging in-game within the next few months. We've also clarified historic cards, historic anthology, now that you have an idea of what that means. And we've dropped the new event types in favor of more specific callouts, such as 8-person pod trapping, which is a feature we're officially adding in the concept stage, and it's currently being scoped out in preparation for development. We've also added Pioneer Set Remasters onto the concept list, which will include Amon Cat Remaster, so that's the official first one, basically, as well as the additional sets we're working in conjunction with Magic R&D to help bring the most relevant Pioneer cards to MTG Arena. So this means it might not be going back in time. They could switch, skip around. And as we continue to expand the available formats and ways to play, we've started to concept out a rework of our Playblade to make organizing and finding these events easier. As our last roadmap update, this is only the... As with our last one, this is only the start of this year. So basically, in the thing, they did mention one thing. Everything on here is slated for 2020. Now, you might have been able to guess that based on the concept of the whole post, but that wasn't explicitly stated. In the video, it was. So this is all coming 2021, which means cube drafting, eight-person uh, eight drafts, pioneer remasters. All of that's coming this year, which is very exciting to see. Last year was a very big meh year in terms of just adding cosmetics all year. Um, but yeah, this is looking pretty good. I'm going to do a whole video covering each item individually coming up soon. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, there are, there was not much else said inside the video that wasn't said here. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, this is really exciting. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.